Hi there! Do you ever get bored of your Minecraft world? Do you find yourself starting a new world every couple of weeks or months or so? Because it's starting to feel monotonous. It's just a couple of buildings pasted into an empty world. Well from today on that's never gonna happen again. My name is Nuvola and today I'm gonna teach you how to go from this to this. This is the first part of a two-part series in which I'm gonna teach you about creating visually attractive worlds to fully immerse yourself into the game and never get bored of Minecraft again. In this first part I'm going to show you everything about pathways and how they can enhance the aesthetics of your Minecraft world by adding some structure and some visual appeal. They can guide you towards your builds, they can show you a hint of what's about to come and you can include all kinds of furniture and decorations which I will show you in part 2 of this series. In this video I've included pretty much every single biome and a block palette for you to work with because a variety of blocks is going to be a huge part of creating visually attractive pathways and I will show you what they look like during the day and during the night. Most of the times people create all kinds of farms and sometimes some pretty buildings but they forget to include the surroundings as well. Because you're in a huge Minecraft world which you can never fully customize because it's just too big. But if you have a village or you have a city or a castle you can include very small details which enhance the beauty of your world significantly. And that's everything I'm all about. I want to inspire you to make more beautiful worlds and spend more time in it. My hope is that at the end of this tutorial you will be able to create a pathway using a variety of blocks that fit the surroundings you're in and that you can start to experiment with including this into your own world. However, before I'm going to showcase all of the different pathways that I've created for you, I'm gonna teach you how to make a good looking pathway. Remember that these guidelines are flexible and that the best design depends on your own personal preferences and the theme of your world. Feel free to experiment and get creative. Now without further ado, let's go! Now let's say that you want to create a pathway going from this side all the way to this side. Now what you could do is go in a straight line all the way towards the other side. However, that's gonna make it feel monotonous and that's what we don't want. That's why the first rule is never go in a straight line. That means we're gonna work in a different way and that's why we're going to create turns and bends. And connected to this first rule is the second rule, always work in odd numbers. That means you work with one three, five, seven or nine blocks straight ahead. The only exception is two blocks. The third rule is to never go more than nine blocks in a straight line. That's not a very strict rule, but I try to keep it into account when I'm creating pathways. Using this method, you can go and create a pathway towards the other side. As you can see, we've got a nice curve into our path. And each section of the pathway is either an odd number, such as 3 or 5, with the exception of 2. Now you can make a road as wide as you want. I tend to use 3 blocks wide, but you can also make it 5 or 7 blocks wide. Just make sure that when you widen the path, you always start on the outside of the bend. And you want to make your way around towards the other side. Now on the inside of the bend, you don't want to make your way all around the middle of the path. You just want to slightly curve it with it. In the end you should get something like this, in my example. Now that we have the pathway, we can change out some of the blocks for the variety of blocks that you choose. In this example, I'm using packed mud and coarse dirt, combined with the dirt path and the grass blocks surrounding it. Once the pathway is in place, you can decorate it using some stone buttons to look like pebbles. Of course, don't forget to light it up 
and I'm using glow lichen as it's more subtle than placing down a torch or a lantern. But feel free to do this any way you like. Some leaves around the pathway and you can create some custom stones next to the path. Using bone meal and some saplings, you can create some trees around the pathway and you can use fences to kind of guide you onto the path. This is a very simple example of how you can easily create a simple pathway which is aesthetically pleasing and can get you from point A to point B in no time. But how does that work when you need to go up a hill? Because for example, you're gonna start down here and we need to get up right there to our precious chest holding all the items we'd ever want. There's a couple of things we need to take into account when creating pathways up a hill. The most important one is that you work with the hill. So you want to kind of create a natural looking pathway up the hill and don't just create a staircase going straight towards it. You can of course do that, but it will look a little bit less natural in the landscape. So we're gonna work our way around this hill and make use of this slightly flatter area right here. Again, make sure that you work your way around the outer bend. So that means we have to switch on this side. On the spot where the pathway changed direction, you can just blend it in with each other a little bit. Now that we have this pathway, we still need to jump up each level. Let's make sure that we don't need to do that anymore by placing down some slabs right here. By placing these cobblestone slabs here, you can just press W and walk up onto the hill instead of you needing to press the jump key. You will notice that when you're using these path blocks that you will see a sliver of the block that's underneath the slab. So I recommend that you replace that block with the same block that you're using as the slab. And in this case, we can use some mossy cobblestone to break up the pattern of the slabs right here. You can even exchange it for some oak planks, for example. Again, I'm using packed mud and coarse dirt to decorate the path a little bit and place down stone buttons as pebbles, some leaves and some trees around to finish it off. But feel free to do this any way you like. And now that you know how to create a pathway, I'm going to showcase you a number of pathways and tell you which block palettes to use, hoping that one or two fit into your world. Let's go! The first path is the one we've used in the example consisting out of packed mud, coarse dirt, path blocks and some regular grass. Now if you're in a field area where you are growing your crops you can exchange the packed mud for pot salt blocks. And if you're going into a more urban area, such as a small village, you can use a variety of cobblestone, mossy cobblestone, tough blocks and break it up with a few stairs in the road, which can act as potholes. You can also use a block palette of bricks, granite and polished granite to give it a little bit more of a modern look. Note that I use different materials for the lighting each time. In a city, I tend to use stone bricks, mossy stone bricks, andesite and regular stone blocks. It gives it a little bit more of an upper class feeling. 
When traversing mountains, you can use dripstone blocks together with light grey terracotta and dead brain coral blocks. Use polished blackstone buttons as little coals or stones that are on the road. In a more forested area, you can use a combination of potzel, coarse dirt and for example muddy mangrove roots. You can also use some spruce planks. In a dark oak forest, I tend to use dark oak logs, some coarse dirt and potzel as well, together with some mud brick blocks. In a savanna biome, I tend to use acacia planks, acacia logs, orange terracotta and sometimes a little bit of tuff. In a mangrove area, I tend to use mangrove planks and mangrove logs together with some mud, packed mud and mud brick blocks. In an old growth pine forest, I tend to use a mixture of potso, spruce wood, mud blocks and sometimes some brown concrete powder. In snowy plains biomes, I tend to use a lot of stripped spruce wood together with some birch wood as well. You can also use spruce planks or brown concrete powder. On water, I tend to use a lot of lily pads and drip leaf. But if you're a bit fancier than I am, you can also use prismarine blocks like I'm using right here. In a cherry biome, I tend to use pink terracotta, cherry planks and stripped cherry wood. And you can place some pink petals in between. Staying with this slightly pinkish color, we're going to the mushroom biome where we're using light grey terracotta, dead bubble and fire coral and some coarse dirt. In the jungle biome, I tend to use jungle planks, some potzel, bamboo blocks and coarse dirt. In the red desert, I tend to use smooth redstone orange concrete, acacia planks and also some coarse dirt. Use some spruce trapdoors here and there to break up the floor a little bit. In the desert I tend to use birch planks, smooth sandstone, rooted dirt and white terracotta. In the end dimension I tend to use birch planks, end stone bricks, smooth sandstone and some end stone itself. In the nether dimension, I tend to use warped stem or crimson stem, warped blocks, nylium, and the blank variants of each of the respective biomes. In the basalt delta, I tend to use deep slate bricks and cobble deep slate together with magma blocks and basalt blocks. And finally, in the nether wastes or near a bastion for example, I tend to use nether bricks, blackstone, polished blackstone bricks and gilded blackstone. But this is a very advanced one. Now let's say that you have a world in which you have a couple of buildings, some farms, maybe a starter house, but you don't have them connected using pathways. Let me show you how to connect it and let's transform this into a cozy village. I'm starting off with marking out the border of my village. And I'm using stone to do this. In the second part of this tutorial I will show you how to make this one look good as well. Here you can see me creating the pathways by marking them out using path blocks. And as you can see I'm always using curves, making my way around the town, connecting all of the builds. The boat, which is out on the river, needs to be connected as well. To connect the boat to the mainland, I'm using a combination of lily pads and drip leaves. To make sure that no monsters will spawn, I'm using sea pickles to light it up.
On land, I'm using a combination of packed mud, coarse dirt and path blocks to connect it to the village. To make it look aesthetically pleasing, I'm surrounding the path using leaf blocks, some lamp posts, some fences and in this case a couple of trees. For which I'm also using different types of trees because this gives a variety of green around you, making it look not so monotone. Inside the village I'm going for a combination of cobblestone, mossy cobblestone, tough blocks and coarse dirt. Now I'm using this palette throughout the village, but if you want, you can give different parts of your village different roads. For example, the one using granite and brick blocks, or the one using stone bricks and andesite. You can specify different parts of your village using these different palettes. As you can see I'm placing down a lot of trees around. This is to make it feel a kind of built in because it's a very open landscape. This gives it a little bit more of a cozy feeling. Now in the second part of this tutorial I will however remove a couple of these trees because I want to put in some furniture and some other decorations. On the other side, we've got a huge landscape, which are going to be our farm fields. We're going to create a road here as well, connecting the windmill and the automatic composter at the back to the village. A very important component is lighting. So in this part of the video, I'm creating lampposts throughout the village. In the farm fields, I'm going for the Potzol coarse dirt and path block palette and using some spruce slabs to work my way down or up the hill. You can even give these simple farm fields an aesthetically pleasing look by just adding a couple of leaf blocks or trees around and some scarecrows. These scarecrows can also act as lighting to make sure that no mobs will spawn in your farm fields when you're walking through them at night. You can actually see this as the introduction to the second part of this tutorial because this is mostly just making it look aesthetically pleasing rather than focusing on the pathways. And there you go, the farm fields now also look aesthetically pleasing. In this video I've given you a ton of information, I hope that it's useful to you. Don't forget that there's a second part to this tutorial in which I'll show you a bunch of tiny decorations and furniture to put into your world and make it feel even more alive. And I'll hope to see you in that video. Now if you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And stick around, consider subscribing. All of the pathways will be available to YouTube members via a world download and you can join our Discord server for free in the description below. Anyway, that's it for me. I hope to see you in the next one and have a great day. Cheers!